does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need धन्यवाद आचार्य जी आ, हमारे एलमनाई और हमारे एसोसिएशन के प्रेसिडेंट कल्पेन जी की क्वेरी है वो आपसे पूछना चाहते हैं कल्पेन सर काइंडली अनम्यूट एंड यू कैन आस्क थैंक थैंक्स सर नमस्कार आचार्य जी सबसे पहले तो आपका धन्यवाद आपने हमारे साथ ये वक्त बिताया मैं केमिकल इंजीनियर हूँ आई आई टी डेली बैच का और तकबीर से मैं आई एम अहमदाबाद में भी पढ़ा हूँ और शायद मुझे लगता है कि आज वाकई एक अच्छा मौका है आपको कभी आया मैं अहमदाबाद में भी बुलाने का माई क्वेरी आचार्य जी फॉर यू इज इफ वी रिकनसाइल विद द करंट रियालिटी एंड ऑल्सो फील जेन्यूनली सेटिस्फाइड देन वॉट कैन मोटिवेट द पर्सन फर्दर इन लाइफ इज इट एन आइडियल स्टेट टू बी इन और इज इट समथिंग टू वरी अबाउट a deeper appreciation of the same reality that we feel satisfied with hmm? because you see what is this reality we are talking of we are talking of the facts of the universe and we are talking of the experiencer of those facts that's what constitutes reality you know reality means two things one there is this wall in front of me there is this camera there are all these gadgets that surround me there is this laptop in front of me uh, there is this handkerchief and then there is me that is assigning meanings to all those things that i can see perceive whatever so that's what is reality the the experiencer and the experienced combined no do i really know that because the human condition is such that if we really know what is going on in this in this game of duality the experiencer the experienced and the experience gyan gyata ge this this trifecta if we really know what is going on then we will know we are trapped we are born in a trap so it is impossible to be satisfied with reality if we actually know it and if we are satisfied it is worth investigating whether there is a point at which our inquiry for some reason has stagnated because you see the the nature of ego is such that it values security more than knowledge if knowing something might prove hazardous then it refuses to know and that refusal is anyway easy and comfortable that refusal is anyway comfortable because knowing the truth is an arduous thing hmm? now who wants to slog in order to become additionally uncomfortable you know i am in a happy situation i am in a comfortable place if i want to know the next level of truth then it would require exploration investment effort now what do i get out of that effort actually more discomfort so there is no incentive to explore please see once one is in a happy space what incentive is there to peel a few more layers of reality to get to the core of truth one one investigates one explores so that one may get some rewards in the case of reality the reward is further discomfort hmm? so so it's very then uh, then prakritik uh, that uh, one one settles down 
one settles down you know one settles down and that's why you probably not appreciate that there is so much emphasis on settling down in our culture society and thought when wants to settle down as fast as possible because if you don't settle down you run the risk of letting things become more and more uncomfortable for yourself hmm? because you will know more and knowledge is dangerous settling down means now you have turned a place as your permanent station and you can have a nest there and you don't need to know much you don't need to travel much your journey has come to a full stop and all that is okay so you see we are born in a in a in a bad situation and it's a it's a difficult thing to admit the very fact of birth is in some sense an unfortunate event we are born with fear we are born with greed we are born in ignorance but with the potential to transcend all these the potential is a is a thing in future the potential is a thing to be realized the potential is not automatic but the misery is automatic the child cries aloud the moment it is born but the child has to be painfully educated for two decades before he can be called a human being so education takes so much effort but ignorance is automatic prakritik it just happens it is there right from the womb so one cannot be born into a happy place one cannot be born in freedom we are all born in bondages one cannot be born in realization we are all born in ignorance so the the fact of human existence is really not a joyful one joy is something one has to attain with a lot of effort determination and and renunciation that's when you come to liberation and joy and that that bliss that we so much talk of have we come to that if we are contented have we really come to that point now can there be contentment without realization or joy have we really realized right up to the point where the object to be realized and the subject that realizes have both merged into each other and vanished all that euphemism that we have for the absolute have we come to that and if we have not come to that how is it possible that we are already free of our troubles now it's a dangerous situation where the troubles still exist but one feels as if they do not the enemy has succeeded in masquerading itself to the extent that the victim that the attacked one has been lulled into complacency right now having an appreciation of the threats that surround you at most gives you sleepless nights but it still saves you because you know that you are threatened but what if you are threatened but feel that you are not what if there are problems but they have become invisible that's a bigger that's a bigger threat is it not so so now that's also the reason why there are so many people who who do not want to come to the scriptures who do not uh, venture into spirituality because the first thing the upanishads will tell you or a buddha will tell you is that you are in a bad place hmm? how does the bhagavad gita open arjun says krishna take me to the middle of the battlefield and there he realizes that he is sandwiched very badly on one hand are the people who have suffered along with him his brothers his relatives on the other hand are his teachers his his friends and so many others he has lived with 
what to do i find it very symbolic that first of all in the gita there is an appreciation of the dire situation every single individual is in that's life we are in a bad situation and if arjun does not appreciate that then the gita won't happen arjun is the only one on that battlefield who says i want to take stock i want to really know what's going on we need to know what is going on and when you know what is going on it is often not pleasant just as the first noble truth of buddha is dukha life is suffering life is suffering now that has to be appreciated and acknowledging that is not easy because to acknowledge that life is suffering you will have to admit that all that which you call as pleasurable in your life all that which you think of as good healthy okay acceptable is not as healthy or as acceptable as it appears a lot of change is needed things are deceptively all right probably nothing is all right the all rightness would vanish when one would go deeper into the reality of things so <clears throat> i suppose uh, if one is blessed to be in a position where uh, one feels that there are no obvious challenges or troubles and that things are mostly all right then one should use this opportunity to go deeper into reality how by asking questions how by experimenting by exploring by going into places where mostly people don't dare to go or don't feel interested to go that's when something opens up is it not i i i'd put it this way probably the game wouldn't have turned around for siddharth gautam had he not asked those three four questions to his charioteer and what did he ask he said does old age happen to everybody does sickness happen to everybody then he asked does everybody die and finally he had the heart to ask please tell me will i too die and he was fortunate to have a companion a charioteer who said yes prince you too will die and it was those questions those uncomfortable questions asked in an inopportune moment that helped uh, buddha seek liberation because you see at that moment he was going to a festival a gala carnival of some kind it was the youth festival of his kingdom it was not at all opportune or comfortable uh, to that moment to have asked those questions but he did do we ask those questions my hunch is that the most important questions remain unasked the most important conversations never really happen they don't happen because we make it a point to avoid them we talk of all the silly things we engage into all kinds of discussions and conversations but we don't get into that which is really needed to be talked of or discussed or explored hmm. similarly think of the of the bandit hmm, who was who was uh, called ratnakar at that time daku ratnakar and then he became the sage valmiki he asked his wife he said you partake in all the riches i bring home and tomorrow if i rot in hell will you suffer with me and he too was fortunate to have a wife who candidly admitted no no dear one that you have to bear all alone i won't accompany you 
now that's the kind of question most persons don't ask their spouses that's where we feel we are in a happy and comfortable and settled place you are in a settled place only as long as you are not asking those honest questions the thing is we are so afraid of honesty and those questions because we know that our fragile peace would simply shatter the moment real inquiry happens husband asks these questions to the wife and after that you have a huge war for the next 7 days so uh, you just want to avoid all that you don't want to ask those questions similarly do we want to know the relationship the, the 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 fact of our relationship with our customers with our employees or our employer with with anything we are related to and anything that we feel good and nice about that's the thing with all this apparent goodness and niceness it does not survive being scratched it is so superficial you just scratch the surface and the ugliness beneath shows up hmm? so we let the surface remain as it is we don't even scratch it we don't ask the real questions ever and we just talked of asking real questions to the ones you are related to worse still we do not ask the real questions to ourselves hmm? why do i visit this place every day why do i return to this place every day in the morning i do something every day why why do i have all these phone numbers in my directory why must i live in the place where i do because we have because we have not asked these questions since long so they start appearing odd we feel but you know nobody asks these questions certain things are taken for granted this is common sensical you know keep common sense aside and uh, keep uh, truth at the center for a while and then uh, you'll realize that uh, you have something to be grateful for once you put truth in the limelight you will get a purpose for life because you see a rightful purpose for life has to be in the negativa we are people in bondages so the right purpose must involve challenging your bondages now you cannot challenge your bondages if you do not even know your bondages and realization of bondages comes from honest inquiry so when you really inquire what do you get you get an idea an assessment of how deeply bonded you are and once you get that you get a purpose to live for now there would be energy in life now there would be a certain vitality and a certain honesty because you know there is something that ought to be challenged you will say can't one live simply can't one live purposelessly well that is the prerogative of realized saints those who have lost their bondages they and only they can live purposefully we common human beings must have a great purpose to live for our life needs to be purposeful and if your right is if your life is rightly purposeful then one day you might come to the point of purposelessness hmm? that is the absolute the final but right now as we are we must have a great purpose and that purpose i said can come only from an assessment of one's bondages and that assessment can come only from courageous inquiry courageous inquiry ask see probe experiment inquire and then you will see that there is something in fact there is a lot waiting to be done take that up नमस्कार आचार्य जी मुझे एक सवाल ये पूछना था कि ये जो आपने क्वेश्चंस पूछने और एक्सपेरिमेंट करने की बात जो कही तो क्वेश्चंस पूछने और एक्सपेरिमेंट करने की कोई सीमा है क्या एक नॉन एंडिंग पाथ की तरफ हमें ले जाता है 
अगर ये नॉन एंडिंग पाथ पे जाता है विच आई प्रेज्यूम ऐसा होता होगा उस केस में क्या हम ऐसा कह सकते हैं कि ज्ञान को सीख करने की जो हमारी टेंडेंसी है उसमें हम जब उस रास्ते पे चलेंगे तो कभी भी डेस्टिनेशन तक पहुंच पाएंगे क्या और अगर डेस्टिनेशन तक नहीं पहुंच पाएंगे तो हम उस कार्य को अधूरा छोड़ने के रिस्क में हमेशा रहते हैं और कहीं ना कहीं ये हमारे जीवन की मीनिंग को इनकम्प्लीट रहने का खतरा प्रोड्यूस करता है एंड दिस इज समथिंग विच 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 डिस्टर्ब आवर माइंड तो वट इज द डेस्टिनेशन इन द क्वेस्ट ऑफ सीकिंग नॉलेज इफ देर शो एंड इफ इट इज सपोज टू बी इनकम्प्लीट What is the point in seeking knowledge? That's my question. Once you ask a certain question, hmm, what you get is clarity. Then that clarity is not there just to be thought of. It is not an idea that has been given to you. If you are honest enough, then that clarity is something you are obliged to now live. Once you live it. once you start putting it in action then you get the right to ask subsequent questions and then again those subsequent questions have to be lived right now what is happening in the process of putting that clarity in action what is happening is that the actor is getting reduced that the actor is losing his baggage hmm? you do not reach a destination the actor is the one aspiring usually to reach a destination is he not that actor never reaches a destination the destination of the actor is to reach his dissolution whereas your mental model is that of a man walking down a road you feel you are you are starting from somewhere and you have to reach a point somewhere outside of yourself far away that's not how the spiritual thing operates in the spiritual journey you are not walking down a road the action that is happening is reducing you and when have you reached the destination when there is nobody left to reach the destination when there is just nobody left to talk of a destination to talk of this and that that's when you have arrived the only problem in this is that when you tell this to the ego it does not sound attractive or appealing at all why because the ego wants to have the pleasure of knowing and announcing that it has reached the destination that's what you want to do right i have i have i won this title i've completed my degree and then you want to put that on facebook the thing is in the spiritual process when you have really won it you won't survive to declare it and that's why the ego does not like the spiritual process the ego says what's the point if at the destination i will no more be alive i want to be at the destination and also have the pleasure of experiencing the destination of consuming the fun but if that is the objective then you will never be at the destination <laughs> no so the right action therefore is is something that keeps dissolving you do you get the kind of algorithm we are talking of there can be no algorithm but just for the sake of uh, a bit of right, clarity right sir right, right sir right so you I, I, I ha you yeah. know you live and when you live rightly that enables you to know further and all this is happening at the periphery internally when all this is happening you are getting dissolved dissolved and dissolved so basically there is nothing called destination or something called accomplishment it's about enjoying the process it is about daring to be in the process <laughs> enjoyment and all i do not know <laughs> okay, it requires okay. lots of guts Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Uh, introducing myself, I uh, graduated in 2010, and right now I'm working as an associate professor at IIT Jodhpur. So I've been listening to you, and I'm, I uh, sincerely admire the depth with which you teach spirituality. So, uh, in line with what you have been uh, talking about, uh, I have uh, actually I had a lot of questions, but. Uh, 
looking at the time maybe you'll be able to take up one or two so the first question was uh, what is the main aim of getting this human life so you you said there's a purpose and uh, like the, the the common man should have a purpose and once you reach the state of enlightenment then you become purposeless then you become uh, one with the with the formless so uh, so when we talk about the main aim of getting this human life what is that why am i born so this is number one the other thing uh, in line with what you were explaining to the uh, to uh, other questioners was that Uh, the aim is to remove the suffering because we we feel that we are suffering we, we experience emotions we fear we experience fear we experience sadness we experience um, a lot of disappointments in our life so if that is the aim that animals are better because they don't have that level of information processing and therefore uh, they have no, perhaps they have lower stresses and lower tensions in life then what is what is it that is so special about being called bade bhag manush tan bhava Uh, so why why it is called so uh, so important to get a human body and the other thing is that when we look at the history we talk about saints we look at their lives uh, we talk about jesus christ how he struggled passing the message to the common man people were actually cruel to him so uh, and similarly we witnessed there were 10 sikh gurus who also encountered these these um, uh, you know these i would say counter attacks that when they tried spreading uh, the message of truth across masses there was a retaliation there was a resistance uh, and that actually impacted them physically and financially so uh, what is uh, what is it what should be my driving force how do i know what my aim is and uh, if i am able to reach if i am not able to reach that aim what are the consequences what is going to happen then where am i uh, where am i losing what am i losing and the other thing is that uh, after enlightenment if there are uh, there are sufferings still so what is the benefit of being enlightened these are my questions thank you see if if we if we know what is it to live what is it to be alive then the purpose of life is uh, easily apparent hmm? we are we are born into ignorance are we not there is no moment when we are not divided not worried not afraid not tempted not insecure there is hardly any decision that goes as per the plan we think of one thing and something else happens we live at the mercy of circumstances so much therefore we have to keep fighting the circumstances death keeps staring at us as the biggest scare there can be that's the human condition we have to first of all acknowledge the human condition as we as we live it and as we see it unfolding all around us hmm? you look at the common man on the road do you see joy peace contentment on his face you look at the family you look at the man the wife the kids the parents do you really see honesty and confidence and faith and deep love there or do you also see things that are not apparent but very strongly present below the surface you look at friends hanging out together having apparently a good time and then you see them splitting you look at the man proposing to the woman and tossing up words like love and togetherness and eternity and infinity and then you see what happens to all that just a few months down the line so that's the human condition you no know? 
you could also look at how our jungles are what we have done to the other species the hundreds of species that are going extinct every day yes every day you could you could look at our slaughterhouses you could look at our carbon footprint and then you will realize what the purpose of life is the purpose of life is to extricate ourselves from this abominable situation we are in a muck and we need to be redeemed extricated that's what one has to live for now human beings are special because they have a consciousness that asks for liberation i said special and special does not necessarily mean better or higher compared to the other species all the other species are completely prakritic they have no urge for liberation they have only one center within the center of physical nature the moment they are born their fate has already been decided a dog will live as a dog no dog is ever going to do great things and equally no dog is ever going to do demonic things you will not find a great difference between one dog and another dog dogs are dogs but you will find a great difference between one man and another man it is very possible that one person can be absolutely incomparable to another person when it comes to the level of consciousness and the quality of life he has lived this urge to be liberated is a double edged sword it works both ways it can take you higher and higher or it can make you sink to unimaginable depths so are human beings actually privileged on account of their human birth not really 999 out of 1000 human beings actually live lives worse than that of animals the opportunity to rise above the animalistic consciousness is utilized only by 1 in 1000 yes that 1 in 1000 is actually far better than animals but only 1 in 1000 the others would actually have been better off being born as animals it is their misfortune that they were born as human beings because if you are born a dog you cannot suffer beyond a point you cannot also fall beyond a point hmm? being born a human being you can fall to atrocious depths the freedom to choose the faculty of choice is available only to human beings most of us misuse it why because we have no self knowledge we do not know who we are we do not understand that we are just incomplete consciousnesses we are thirsty minds whose purpose is to quench their inner thirst we think that uh, we are born to earn to marry to procreate to consume to have fun and then die one day hmm? this kind of uh, life philosophy arises from absence of self knowledge unfortunately this is the prevailing life philosophy and it has always been this way it's just that today we are uh, additionally especially 
unfortunate because this philosophy has been empowered with a lot of progress in technology and a lot of prosperity a false philosophy has been given a lot of technical and economic power so we are wreaking havoc on ourselves and the entire planet hmm? we are very very different from animals animals are born to live and die as animals a road accident happens right and the road is running in the middle of a jungle a road accident happens and no animal comes to help the victims it's okay it's okay you need not raise your finger at animals and prove them guilty it is even possible that if uh, there is a dying person on the road some eagle or vulture may actually come close to feast upon this dying one and you will not be able to declare that uh, that bird as evil because the bird is only doing what its prakritik constitution what its genetic impulses command it to do it cannot do anything else it does not have the power to choose but if there is a road accident and human passer by do not stop to help then they are indeed guilty are they not that's the difference we are creatures of consciousness human beings have a consciousness that can look at itself and when it looks at itself it sees bondages therefore it is obliged to work for liberation and that is the purpose of life by their bodily constitution animals do not have a consciousness that can self reflect that can know itself therefore they will never know that they are in bondage hence they live in some kind of superficial peace animals never suffer the kind of tensions and anxieties that most human beings do that is because they have no potential for liberation now you have to decide what you want to do with your potential and your inner urge it's just an opportunity and we said this opportunity works both ways it can it can take you to the to liberation or it can take you to the various substitutes of liberation that crowd the market in our markets markets of all kinds what's being sold is actually in the psychological sense nothing but substitutes to the real thing the real thing is very expensive from the point of view of the ego so the ego tries to have cheap substitutes and that's what abounds the markets hmm? be it the markets of relationships of jobs markets of money opportunity career growth opportunities or markets of material goods we go to those markets because we just don't have the courage to pay the price for the real thing so we go to these duplicate markets instead hmm? i'm not sure whether i have answered all the three four questions that you had but i tried to bundle all of them into one and respond have i succeeded uh yes uh, you have answered all the questions so the last question uh, which i asked you was that uh, what are the benefits of being enlightened no there is nobody to receive those benefits
that I'll be free from all sufferings. There will be no I. There will be no I. As long as you are there, how can you be free from sufferings? <laughs> See, let's let's be a little down to earth. It does not behoove us to ask for what will happen when there will be complete freedom from sufferings. Right now, let's acknowledge first of all that all of us, you, me, everybody, we are in a pretty miserable state. And we should be grateful even for a little relative progress that we can have in the internal sense. Huh? What will happen at the final point is just too much to ask for. Why are we asking for final enlightenment? Have we had even a relative progress? It's like asking what will happen at the moon. When we are so badly hit in the legs that we can't even um, move to our restroom or the nearby market. Huh? So, what is more practical and what is more honest is to look at where we really are in the practical sense and try to improve from there. It is not of much use to have a great discussion about the state of enlightenment. That is one thing that should actually never be discussed. But the ego finds a lot of pleasure discussing enlightenment. Now you are so far away from it. Additionally, Enlightenment is not something that is ever going to happen to you. When there is enlightenment, there is no you. So why are you so interested in enlightenment? We should be interested in relative liberation, incessant, determined process of liberation, not in the end result of the process. And that is Nishkam Karma. Don't talk too much about what would happen right at the end. See where you are and proceed from there. And that would be far more helpful. Far more helpful. Huh? Do the next thing right. Don't speculate about some divine state. Just do the next thing right. Look at what is the next decision you have to make. Look at the next issue you have at hand. Hmm? And ask yourself, what is the best I can do here? Who am I and hence what is it that I now need to do in this present context? That's what is spiritual. Spirituality is, is not about, uh, you know, speculating or imagining some promised state of enlightenment. Enlightenment is a word that I am really um, wary of uttering. Because a lot of mischief has happened in the name of enlightenment. The aim of spirituality is to give you freedom from your inner diseased state. Not to give you theories and ideas and stories about what absolute health looks like. The sick man does not need a great song about health. The sick man needs a medicine that would make him relatively better the next day. And the next day, again he has to try to be relatively better the next day. That's the process. The process is what must matter. Hmm? Not colorful stories about the end result. Hmm? 